LED sensor can be used. Be sure to check carefully the technical specifications prior to purchasing your camera in order not to buy a camera equipped with a CMOS sensor, which are cheaper but much less sensitive and in practice are not suited for astronomy. Sometimes one extra letter in the product name from a given manufacturer may mean that the camera has a CMOS sensor and not CCD. An important feature of this camera is that it has a lens which is easy to remove. There you are. This has a rather atypical thread, so in order to attach it to a telescope, we'll need to use a special coupling. These can readily be bought and cost 35 zlotys. We screw the coupling into the place where the camera lens was and then attach the camera to the focal point of the telescope by simply screwing it into the body tube in the appropriate opening. And there, the camera is ready for use. This is a large telescope, and not everyone has such a model, but we can also use smaller telescopes. Here, for example, we have a much smaller amateur telescope. It also has the same type of interface, and so we can take our camera and attach it here. It has the same standard one and a quarter inch astronomical interface, and so Using the same coupling, we can attach the camera here. There's no need to worry if we have no telescope, because it turns out that we can do the most interesting things by using the lens from an old photographic camera. Here we have the lens from an old Zenith, which many of us have at home. If not, one of these can be bought in junk shops for as little as 30 zlotys. Let's try attaching the camera to just such a lens. First, we must remove it from the telescope and unscrew the coupling. However, we'll need a slightly different coupling for the lens. These are also readily available for 35 zlotys. Next, we screw it onto the camera, carefully, as the thread in the camera is made of thin aluminum, and so fairly weak. If we have such a short focal length, around 50 millimeters, and short exposure times available in these cameras, a maximum of one-fifth of a second, then it turns out that we don't need a movable mounting. All we need is an ordinary tripod to which we attach the camera. This is another advantage of the Vesta model. It has a standard photographic thread and can be attached to essentially every camera tripod. Screwed on, and now we tighten it down. Very good. The camera is ready for use. The last element in our astronomical observatory is a computer, as this camera alone cannot store images, and so we can register them on a computer. Instead of being a shortcoming, it turns out to be only an advantage. Digital cameras, which have an integrated memory, allow at most only a few scores of frames to be saved. However, we can save many more on a computer's hard drive and take advantage of its greater resolution. The computer doesn't have to be huge. Of course, it requires a USB port, as this is what most Internet cameras use. Once we've connected our camera to the computer, our observatory is ready. 
i nasze obserwatorium gotowe. Jeżeli mamy starszy model If we have an older model computer that is not equipped with a USB port, we can purchase a special PCI card with such a connector for less than 100 zlotys. We'll also need software to register and analyze our photos. Fortunately, this type of software can be found on the internet and downloaded at no charge. I've posted a number of links to this type of software on my website www.ccd.astronet.pl. As far as registration is concerned, I particularly recommend the program K3, CCD Tools, and IRIS for analyzing the images. Once we've put together our workplace, what next? I particularly recommend observations of variable stars. It's a very rewarding subject because professional astronomers are unable to track all the variable stars in the sky, and are very appreciative when they receive such observations. At the same time, you can learn a lot too. There are sites on the internet where we can find such lists of stars worth observing, including the one I mentioned earlier. It has links to lists of interesting stars. Once you become proficient, you can send your observations to AFSO, an international organization that collects such data from amateur astronomers and forwards them, makes them available to professional astronomers. Something else that's very interesting, though it requires a bit of luck, is searching for new stars. Last year, the births of eight new stars were observed in our galaxy. Five of them were brighter than a magnitude of eight, thus well within the range of such equipment. What's interesting is that two of them were discovered by an amateur, using only binoculars. Here we have equipment at our disposition that is much more powerful. Plus we can use computer programs which automatically compare stars with those in existence.